Three little piggies went out to the woods. One built a house made of straw. The second used sticks and the third used bricks. And came the big bad wolf at the door. Throughout the tale, you will learn much more. A long, long time ago, there were three little pigs. And the three little pigs all lived in a tiny house with their mother, who loved them very, very much. However, one day their mother sat them down to breakfast and made an important announcement. <coughs> you are all now too big to live in my small house, she said. So, it's time for you all to go out into the forest and to take care of yourselves. It is very important that you build your houses as soon as possible, because then you will all be safe from the big bad wolf. And as the three loved ones set off into the forest, their mother shed a tear and said to herself, I just hope the big bad wolf don't catch them before they build their houses. And the three little pigs gingerly walked down into the forest along a winding footpath. And it was by a weeping willow tree that they met a strange spindly old hag with a shock of straw hair that reached the sky. Uh, please, old hag, uh, I, I mean old, old woman, <laughs> uh, please, please may I, I cut some of your straw hair off? asked the first little pig. You see, you see, I need to build a home as soon as possible so that I don't get eaten by the big bad wolf and I could use the leftover straw to build my dream home, you see. Well, uh, as it happens, yeah, I could do with a trim, yeah, replied the old hag. So the first little pig flattered the old hag into having a short back and sides, thus ensuring that he had enough straw to build his house. Oh, I am so pleased with my house, said the first little pig. The big bad wolf won't catch me now. It looks very nice, said the second little pig, but the house I build will be stronger than yours. And mine will be even stronger, boasted the third little pig. Anyway, the second and the third little pigs went about their travels, and whilst crossing a rickety old footbridge, they met a giant insect made of sticks. Uh, uh, ha, 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 ha. Hello, uh, excuse me, uh, giant stick insect, said the second little pig. Uh, you have given me an idea. Y you see, you see, I need to build myself a house, um, and perhaps I could make it out of sticks. Well, now, that's an interesting thing you should say there. You are in luck, as it happens, said the giant stick insect, because I am about to molt. And as he did so, he left enough sticks for the second little pig to build the house of his dreams. The big bad wolf won't catch me now, said the second little pig with a chuffed and slightly smug smile on his face. Good, said the slightly leaner giant stick insect as he trundled off over the rickety bridge. Oh, it's very nice, said the third little pig, but I can assure you my house will be so much stronger than yours. And he wandered off into the forest alone. In almost no time at all, the third little pig had bumped into a young man building a wall. Hi, said the third little pig, and uh, what's your name? Well, my name is Adrian, replied the young man, and I am building Adrian's wall. Yeah, get that. Oh, how, how, how great, said the third little pig. Now listen, uh, uh, it's a bit cheeky, but if I help you to build that wall, may I have some of the leftover bricks to build my house so that I can be safe from the big bad wolf, requested the third little pig. Oh, well, of course, said Adrian. And the third little pig helped to build the famous Adrian's wall and was granted enough bricks to build his dream home. Ah, the big bad wolf can never catch me now, he said, as he looked at his big, sturdy house with a feeling of pride and joy. Anyway, a week later, the big bad wolf spotted the house of straw. The smell of the first little pig made him hungry, and he knocked on the door 
and he says, Hey, let me in, little pig. Let me come in now. I, 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 I want to welcome you, obviously, to the neighborhood. <laughs> Through the little letterbox, the first little pig cried, No! No! By the hair of my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in! Then I will huff, and I will puff, and I will blow your house in, growled the increasingly menacing big bad wolf. And that's exactly what he did. He picked up the first little pig and he gobbled him up in a matter of seconds. Oh, mm. oh excuse me. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh, mm. But I'm, uh, I'm still very hungry indeed, said the big bad wolf. And so the wolf continued on his travels through the forest. And as he did, he spotted the house that the second little pig had built with sticks. Mmm, I can smell another little piggy, thought the wolf. And he banged on the door. Uh, oh, 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 please, please, uh, open the door, a little piggy. I want to come in. I'm a nice, very nice big bad wolf, and, uh, and it's so cold out here, said the big bad wolf. No! No way, the second little pig said from the bedroom window. By the hair of my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in. Oh, really? Well, then I shall huff and I shall puff and I shall blow your house in, growled the big bad wolf, showing all of his big sharp teeth. And he blew and he blew until all the sticks fell down. And then the big bad wolf grabbed the second little pig and gobbled him up in no time at all. And now it was not very long before the big bad wolf, the very same one, chanced upon the house of bricks built by the third little pig. And as he banged on that door, the big bad wolf said, Come on, a little piggy wiggy wiggy, let me in um, because um, I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I bring a newsletter from the neighborhood watch. Absolutely not, said the third little pig as he peered from a window in the attic. No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in. Then I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in, snarled the big bad wolf. And he huffed and he puffed. But when he blew, nothing happened at all. Drat! said the big bad wolf. That brick house is too strong for me. <laughs> I must do something very brainy and clever. And that's what I'll do. I shall befriend this clever little piggy. Uh, <coughs> little piggy, he said, changing his tone, uh, to welcome you to the community, I would like to take you to my allotment on the other side of the rickety bridge, uh, and there I will help you fill your basket with as many vegetables as you like, so you can make a huge stew which will be simply delicious. So, be there at nine o'clock sharp, okay? Well, it sounds like a good plan to me said the third little pig. I will see you there tomorrow morning. Okie dokie then. <laughs> I look forward to it then, my new friend, <laughs> said the big bad wolf, thinking he'd planned the perfect crime. But the third little pig wasn't stupid. He knew the big bad wolf wanted to gobble him up. So the next morning, he arrived at the allotment at eight o'clock and filled up his basket with as many vegetables as possible. And when the big bad wolf arrived at nine o'clock, he was furious to see all of his vegetables gone. Ah, that a clever little piggy wiggy has tricked me. Ah, but I must go to his house and still pretend to be his friend. Ah. So he knocked on the door of the third little pig's house. A little piggy, my friend, uh, answer the door, he said smarmily. And when the third little pig looked through the attic window, he said, Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm too busy peeling the vegetables, but thank you so much for my housewarming gift. Your allotment is wonderful. <laughs> no problem, said the fuming wolf. So be ready tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. I have a treat for you. I will take you to an orchard by the babbling stream on the other side of the hill. And there I will help you pick some of the best Granny Smith's apples you have ever tasted. Sure enough, 
The next morning, the third little pig arrived at the orchard at seven o'clock and climbed up a tree and helped himself to some scrumptious Granny Smith apples. But suddenly, the big bad wolf appeared, causing the little pig to be very frightened indeed. Oh, uh, hello, uh, Mr. Wolf, said the little pig, pretending not to be scared. Uh, would you uh, like some apples? And before the wolf could respond, the little pig pelted the big bad wolf with loads and loads and loads of apples. Knocking him out cold. And as the terrified little pig started to run home with apples in his hand, he passed a fun fair. Which made him feel so excited that he just could not resist trying his luck on the coconut shy, where he won a lovely bunch of coconuts. But unfortunately, the wolf had gained consciousness and was catching up with his latest prey. I'm going to get you, little piggy, he snarled. But the quick-thinking little pig hurled two enormous coconuts at the wolf, causing him to lose his balance and land in a huge barrel of sticky cream cheese. And as he came around, the wolf seethed, Yeah, he will pay for this. I hate cheese. It stinks. And my head is sore. But by now, the little pig was safely back inside his house. So the wolf banged on the little pig's door and shouted, How dare you steal all my vegetables and throw apples and coconuts at me and cause me to become cheesy? I am going to climb down your chimney and I am going to gobble you up, third little piggy. But the third little piggy didn't panic. No, he had an idea. He started to boil a huge cauldron of water in the fireplace and into it he put all of the vegetables from the wolf's allotment, the Granny Smith's apples from the orchard and the milk from the coconuts he won at the fair. The big bad wolf climbed to the roof of the house. <laughs> now I'm going to get you, laughed the wolf. Unfortunately, the big bad wolf slipped and slithered down the chimney faster and faster until plop, with a big splash, he tumbled head first into the boiling water, along with the vegetables, the Granny Smith's apples and the coconut milk. Adding salt and pepper to the simmering cauldron, the clever little pig smiled to himself. Now, I really do have a delicious stew with wonderful organic ingredients and the cream cheese from the barrel is an added bonus. And what's more, I will never have to be afraid of the big bad wolf again. Well, over the next few years, the recipe for the third little pig stew became so famous that birds were tweeting it from the treetops. Consequently, the woodland creatures came from far and wide to meet the third little piggy, who was now basking in the glory of his newfound fame. After all, he had become a celebrity chef. Piggy. from the broom.